There's two methods in Structures Office 1.0 to perform plastic bending analysis. One is Cazzoni's method, and the other is this numerical method. The assumption of this method are that plane sections remain plane. That is, there's an, uh, there is a linear strain over the section. There's no distortion of the section. No ovalization, for instance. The section is fully effective. And if you want to see a description of a method that's similar, see uh, Brune section C3.3. So the capabilities, the uh, neutral axis can be at any angle. It can uh, handle multiple materials, sections composed of uh, steel and aluminum, for instance. Uh, Kazani's method could not do that. And you can set uh, multiple critical points, that is points that where you want the strain to not exceed a given value. For instance, if you know a buckling value on a flange. The interface is very similar to the elastic uh, interface for uh, extracting stresses or strains at any location, uh, doing line stress plots. Uh, and the material properties can vary in tension and compression. So to begin with, you've got to define uh, a material. And uh, an excellent source of material properties is the Metallic Material Property Development and Standardization document, the MM. PDS, and it will provide the Ramburg, Ramburg Osgood exponent, your yield stress and tension and compression, and the ultimate stress and tension and compression, as well as Young's modulus. It does not provide the FO value, but the program will calculate that for you, so that's not a showstopper. Inside the document, you will see charts such as this, where uh, the exponents for the different grain directions in tension and compression is shown. Then sometimes you'll see it broken out so that the exponent from initial up to yield is one exponent and then from uh, yield to ultimate is another. If we go over to Structures Office, you'll see uh, you go to, to def input the material definition, you go to the Material tab, Edit Material, click on Add you'll get this dialog box for entering the values. You'll have to input these the name, the Young's modulus, and Poisson's ratio as always. Then for uh, the plastic bending analysis, you'll have to provide yield allowables, longitudinal grain direction. Uh, 1.0 does not use longitudinal transverse for compression and yield, and the ultimate values for tension and compression. Over here is your Ramberg Osgood equation definition and you'll need to in input these exponents from initial to yield in the longitudinal grain direction tension uh, and then from yield to ultimate if these if there is no difference then you just input the value for the exponent in both of these but both of these values have got to be defined when it performs the analysis it will look at your the, the value of the stress that you're putting in it will decide which portion of the curve to use and use the correct um, exponent. And so you do that for tension and you do the same for compression. And that's it. So these two values, these two, and these. So there's eight values you'll need to, to uh, put into your material definition. Okay, now let's walk through uh, actually performing a plastic bending analysis in Structures Office. I've uh, loaded in a cross section. It consists of two rectangles. One is uh, aluminum and the other ma material is steel. It's been meshed, which as always you have to go through the three steps of building the geometry, defining the material, and then meshing it. Uh, it is mesh sensitive, so a denser mesh will give more accurate results. And then simply you go to computations. Over here you'll find the plastic analysis. 
you must give it a name and a neutral axis angle. Let's just leave it at zero for now. And right here I've defined a critical point. And I said the strain allowed is, is a compression of minus 0.02 at 1, 0, which is uh, right here. So we're going to limit strain to that value and solve it. It does some checks to make sure things make sense. And then it shows up here, okay, I didn't want the strain to be greater than minus 0.02, and it shows the actual strain is minus 0.02. So it did what it was requested. Here's your neutral axis, the moment about the neutral axis. We're plotting strain. So this interface, if you've done the elastic bending, should it's identical to that. So you can change it to stress. You can, for instance, uh, do a line plot through that cross section. So to do that, you want, might want to add some construction points. So if I click two points, add a point between one, one point will be right in the center. Same down here. And then uh, let's go over here and select the points we created and say show line plot. And this is the plot of stress since we're plotting stresses over that cross section. And you see that they represent a curve instead of Cazzoni's method which would be a trapezoid representation. It's a, a curve that goes to zero at the neutral axis unlike Cazzoni's method. Now let's take off that uh, critical strain and find out what the maximum allowable would be. So I just click clear and I'll solve it. And now we see that down here we have uh, the locations of the max and min, what the values are, what the max stress, min stress. If we go up in here we can see what was the allowable? It's 170,000 in compression and 170,000 in tension and we see that our, we've reached the maximum compressive stress but not the maximum uh, attention stress. These values are the uh, moments about the X and Y and that would be uh, you know this should be zero. So it's showing, it gives you an uh, estimation of error. So let's go and analyze another cross section. So here's a cross section. Um, and uh, let's just jump in and do an analysis here. We'll do the plastic bending analysis. Any low case name. Uh, we've got our section that rotated 45 degrees, so I can just say 45 and solve it. Now this is a section that uh, we walk through with Cazzoni's method. You see our moment is 25235. That's the ultimate moment about the neutral, uh, about this, if this angle was, uh, about this given angle was the maximum moment. Now let's do Cazzoni's method and do a comparison. I'm going to do principal x, use the values from the database, the longitudinal tension, uh, and I will use tension ultimate and solve it. And we see we get 25156 as opposed to 25235. So that is well within the 5% that uh, Brune predicted. And so you'd always want to, whenever possible, whenever you can use Cazzoni's method, you want to cross check because nothing's perfect. So that's a brief introduction. I think I've covered uh, all the major points. 
Uh, if you have any questions, please get in touch with us. Uh, thank you for listening.